Peace and greetings. Presenting the Network of Awareness Podcast Radio Station. Providing in-depth information on society and culture in America and abroad. Bringing you truth messages of inspiration, keen insight, reputable interviews, and so much more. So now, for the truth you've been waiting for, your host of the Network of Awareness Podcast. Aura! Aura! The Informationalist. 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 You are now tuned in to the network of awareness. To the network of awareness. Yes, yes, peace and greetings, people. This is Or the Information List, and you're now tuned in to the Network of Awareness. And we have uh, another bonus episode for you on a live broadcast. And this one is going to be a short one because I have an interview to conduct. And um, this is something that I don't need to really spend a lot of time on. I just wanted to let you know how I think about this whole situation with the current state of politics and how it's being run, how it's being manufactured and engineered to keep the masses here in the United Shenanigans of America deaf, dumb and blind and to keep them highly motivated emotionally and also the reason why I decided to call this episode the system and the web that they weave because they are weaving a very great web here to get people stuck and caught up and entangled into the propaganda. So let's get into this, shall we? Let's go. Just tell me what's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo. For America. Welcome, folks. Peace and greetings to y'all. Um, welcome to this uh, bonus broadcast episode. Like I said, I'll be doing these types of bonus episodes until I decide to go um, to start season five, which I already decided. I don't know why I said that. Um, I decided to start season five on November 28th. Um, I have interviews that I'll be conducting and we'll be releasing. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff and a lot of things when it comes to, you know, like how we do spirituality, uh, government, just overall awareness, health, um, politics, and just all the shenanigans that go on here in the United States, all the legacy of lies to be revealed. And also the truth that needs to be revealed, especially when it comes to the most high, which is the everlasting truth forever and ever. And uh, that truth is always going to prevail. Righteousness is always going to prevail. Now, 
when it comes to the system here in the United States of America, and when it comes to politicians and politics, we all know that Donald J. Trump has um, had a significant impact on this country. And a lot of people think it's been in a positive way based on what he says. But you have to understand something. Presidents are selected, not elected. I remember when David Icke said that a long time ago when he did the presentation on Children of the Matrix, which is a book that he wrote. And I think that he said it best. Presidents are selected, not elected. Uh, people like Jordan Maxwell give great description to this. But yet, you still people have going to the polls and feeling like, they're making a difference by voting for their president. They feel like they're making their contribution to demonocracy, or should we call it democracy. But in actuality, it's all a big farce because it's really not the truth when it comes to how things are run here. And the powers that be when it comes to the oligarchs and when it comes to the central banking system that pretty much dictates everything that happens in all governments around the world, especially this one. And as you know, the Federal Bank Reserve is a private organization as well as the IRS. There is nothing federal about those institutions. And like is once was said by George Green, the Federal Reserve is about as federal as FedEx. And as you know, FedEx is um, a carrier uh, company that has nothing to do with the post office. The post office is a federal institution, but FedEx is a private corporation that provides parcel service, just like the United States Postal Service. The difference between the two is that the United States Postal Service is a federal institution and is federally funded by the United States government, whereas FedEx is a privately owned, publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange that has stockholders and was created by people that own the company big difference. Same thing with the Federal Reserve. It's nothing federal about it. But yet it dictates a lot of things, just like the IRS dictates a lot of draconian law that is really illegal when it comes to the initial contract of what the Constitution was meant to serve. But I'm not going to go deep into that because this is all stuff. When I talk about these things, people, and I brush over them, um, I have a lot of knowledge that I've studied throughout the past 25 years in regards to this. And I find it interesting where, and I know why, you know, when I, when I post certain things on Instagram and especially when it comes to this man, Trump, you have a lot of backlash because a lot of people adore this man. And especially when it comes to so-called white Americans, especially white Americans that consider themselves to be patriots. But let's not get it twisted, right? There are a lot of people from all different types of nationalities, whether it be so-called white people, black people, brown people, yellow people, all these types of people throughout the United States and social constructs when it comes to the color code, uh, they support this man. And if you haven't listened to my shows in season four, check them out because I talk a lot about this when it comes to the narcissism series. I talked about this many times where Trump is a narcissist. And he's a malignant one. He's also a grandiose. That's why he always boasts about himself, about all these accomplishments that he never accomplished. But just in the manner in which he says it, 
does that's all that matters when it comes to the United States of America because the United States of America is filled with a bunch of narcs heavily. I mean, there's more narcs in the United States of America than there is in any other place around the world. And narcissists are, many of them typically are very grandiose. They always want to make themselves appear to be more than what they are. And America has been socially conditioned to be a society where people really focus on image and how that image is being projected and conveyed to their environment, to the people that they're exposed to and to the people in the country. They get to see them, whether it be on social media, commercial media, or any other commercial platform. And in their own social environments, whether it be with their family, with their friends, with their associates, and with their work or with their coworkers. And many of you understand what I mean by this because we go through these situations where sometimes when we don't know what narcissism really is, we are experiencing it with people. And to some degree, All of us, especially in this country, have a little bit. We're not narcissistic, but we do have a little bit of narcissism in us because we have to in order to survive within this climate called the United States of America and the the dynamic socially and how everything functions. All right. It's you have to have a little bit of it to protect yourself and survive in this very narcissistic society that we, that is steadily growing here in the United States. And it's all about image. It's one of the reasons why I'll give you a simple example. You ever go to families or friends' houses and depending on whether it's a new house or depending on if you're going there for the first time, what's one of the things that many people want to do. And I've experienced this myself with family members. They want to show you around the house. They want to show you everything that they have. They want to show you the the jacuzzi, the in-ground pool. They want to show you these lavish rooms. They want to show you their man cave. And they just want to show off what they have. And then it becomes a, you know, a tour. And even though that person may not be a narcissist to some degree, but they are practicing in narcissistic behavior. And it's this look at what I got compared to what you got, or just look at what I got when it comes to the material world. And one of the reasons why Trump is so revered and so idolized and and looked on as an icon in politics and looked on as a savior It's just because of his attitude, his character, his very narcissistic character. And people gravitate to that. People also gravitate to his racial belief systems because he says he's not a racist, but yet he's always making racial comments when it comes to black and brown people. And a perfect example was when Puerto Rico had that very tragic hurricane that many people lost power and suffered, he was throwing paper towels at the people, at the Puerto Rican people in Puerto Rico, and treating them like they were peasants. And this is all well documented because it was, it was, uh, there was footage on it. And he was treating Puerto Ricans like they were peasants. Like they were nothing. And he's done this many times over. But then, of course, people say, oh, he's just not he's not racist and all that. But what I say to you people, don't get caught up in these arguments with people in regards to this, because you're just going to wind up spinning the wheels round and round. But you're not going to go nowhere with this because the ego and it's been said before, like in the movie Revolver. The ego will fight to the very death to defend itself. It's just a fact. And many people 
operate through their ego instead of their operating through their higher spiritual self. So instead of being humbled individuals, we have a lot of prideful individuals. And this is one of the reasons why this man is shown so much love and respect and admiration. So what I want to present to my listeners here at the Network of Awareness is that the system and the web that they weave is only meant to get you more and more entangled into the propaganda of things so that the systematic deconstruction, the systematic destabilization of our infrastructure can take its course to achieving the one world order system. And no man, especially Donald Trump, is going to prevent that from happening. If anything, he is put in place so that it can happen, so that it can move forward right under our noses without us even realizing it. Now, I know many of my truth seekers and critical thinkers that listen to my show know exactly what I'm talking about. You're not fooled by this. But like I said before, I also do this show and bring awareness to everyone, even the two-thirds of the population that are lost, that are lost sheeple, that are deaf, dumb, and blind. It doesn't make them a bad person. doesn't make them bad people. It's just that they're lost. They don't know. And hopefully, with people like myself and many, many others, sometimes that message gets across at the right time if they're ready to receive it. And hopefully, this message on this broadcast today can be that same thing. It can be that that message that says, wait a second, I never really understood it that way. Let me look more into this. But the reality is that when it comes to this system, especially with the narc, which is Trump, you have to understand that this is all being done by design. Now, what did they say? They said that Biden stole the presidency. Very true. They said that Trump should have won. Very true. But why you think that Biden was allowed to win? Well, maybe it's because it's that good cop versus bad cop. And if you don't know what big uh, good cop versus bad cop, it's just a form of manipulation that a lot of cops would use during interrogation of a possible suspect in a crime especially when it comes to like murders and rapes and what they would do or what they still do to present day is the good cop, or should I say the, usually the bad cop comes in first and the bad cop is very abrasive, very strong willed, you know, like, Hey, you better give me this. I know you did it. You know, sometimes they may, they used to hit them with the phone books so they don't get bruised. Or they intimidate them and say, I'm going to lock you up for life. I mean, all these different threats. The, the, the bad cop is coming off super, super aggressive. Super aggressive. And I want you to understand this when we're looking at Biden, right? Because Biden's a gangster president. He don't give a fuck. He's like, I'm going to fuck you in more ways than Sunday. And I really don't give a shit what you think. He got everybody thinking that he was going to help black people and he just shitted on black people across the board in this country. Those are all facts. He pretty much shitted on everybody, to be honest with you. But everything that he promised, he didn't come through on a damn thing by design. And a lot of you dummies fell for it, especially those that were against Trump. Now, let me just say this before I go any further. I don't give a shit who is the president. I really don't give a rat's ass because I know that they're selected. I know what they represent. I give my praise to the most high. I follow the most high. The most high is my CEO. The most high is the chief executive offer in my life. 
period. I don't follow man. Man is faulty, especially men that worship idol gods like Satan. That's just a fact. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's true. And this man is no different. But going back to the good cop, bad cop. When that aggressive cop is done with interrogating, the suspect has a bad taste in their mouth. They are somewhat traumatized by the interrogation experience. And here comes the good cop. Hey, you want a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Lights the cigarette up for them. You want some coffee? Juice, water, some donuts? Whatever they got on hand. Yeah, here. Here's some Kentucky Fried Chicken, brother. Oh, thank you. Whatever they got, what they, whatever they have to offer. And then they talk very peaceful. They, they're very accommodating. And they're going to say everything that sounds good to the ear of the possible, of the suspect in a crime. To get them to open up and to completely let their guard down. And to completely disregard any boundary that that suspect had to admitting anything on record. And usually the good cop will get that suspect to spill all the beans. And then guess what? Everything the bad cop said that they're going to do to them when it comes to arrest and penalty the good cop, you know, make sure that they execute that as well after everything because they got all the information they need. And pretty much the suspect in the crime that now admitted to whatever they admitted is now fucked. That's why they say anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Well, it, it can be used against you in the interrogation because that's when it really starts anyway. That's why you have to, when you're dealing with police, you have to give them very limited information and just withhold that and wait till your attorney shows up and let the attorney do the talking for you. But because we are emotional creatures, we tend to be chaos. We tend to gravitate to the good cop because of the approach and it's just another form of manipulation, people. So who's the good cop here? Trump. Who's the bad cop? Biden. And we, I all knew this. I talked about this. I, I said that he was going to run again. I said it. See, everything I'm talking about right now, I got receipts that I was predicting all of this. Because it's plain as day. This is not rocket science. It may seem like rocket science to the people that are unaware to those that are misinformed or uninformed or that are very apathetic and don't give a shit because they just live their life egoically. And those are the people that are going to suffer the most because when this, when this um, one world order system comes knocking on their door, they're going to submit. They're not going to reject it because they're not going to even know what to do to combat it. And they have no faith in anything. Forget about having faith in the Most High. These people have faith in shit. They don't even have faith in themselves. So here we have this system that is, you know, weaving the web for people to get entangled. And just off this press conference that he did yesterday, it's been an entire, entire shit show. So I'm going to read to you what this article says. And it says that former U.S. President Donald Trump speaks at the Mar-a-Lago Club in Palm Beach, Florida on Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Trump formally entered the 2024 U.S. presidential race, making official what he's been teasing for months just as many Republicans are preparing to move away from their longtime standard bearer. So I could tell you, and I put this on social media, 
I said, watch those, you know who people are going to start puffing their chest out. And who was I talking about? I'm talking about those Trump supporters. I'm talking about those so-called patriots. I'm talking about those pro-Trumpers, which statistically are mostly so-called white people in America, especially racist white people in America. Love this man. They love his narcissistic ways. And other people, too, that are narcissists from different ethnic backgrounds. They all love him. I got a cousin that swears by him. I have an aunt that loves this man. And this man has done shit for her. Not a damn thing. He did not make the economy better. He didn't make anything better. He just gave the illusion of it through his speeches and the way he people. Let me tell you how people love this man, like especially when he would have debates and the way he would disrespect people in his narcissistic way and gaslight them. They love it. Why? Because they do the same thing. They're doing it every day in their daily lives. There's people that have platforms like myself and they gaslight people on their platforms all the time. They are very narcissistic. And that's why you'll hear them say a lot of people be like, oh, I like Trump. I like Trump. I like the way he, he operates. It's because they like the narcissist within him that they have within themselves. Energy gravitates to the energy that it's emanating. And that's why a lot of narcissists like him because he's just like them. They see themselves within him. And every time he talks ratchet and condescending and boastful and prideful, oh, I've done this, I've done that. I've saved the economy. I'm the best president in the world. It's like, just like Kanye, right? Kanye is like, I'm a genius. And what is his friend tell him? Well, how can you call yourself a genius? That's something other people have to say about you. That's other people have to testify to that based off your works. Not you, but that's what narcs do. They are some of the most egoic creatures on the face of the planet. They are gangster with their narcissism. They don't give a shit. They have very little empathy. Narc fits the, um, narc. Trump fits the spectrum of a narc in many different ways. Many different ways. And that's why people are gravitating to him. And I'm going to tell you, people, get ready for 2023 because it's going to be a crazy year now that he's back. Not that it hasn't been crazy. I mean, this has been a fucked up year. I mean, we've never seen gas prices like this. Never. We've never seen inflation the way we've seen it. But when he was president, a lot of that was quelled for the purpose of good cop, bad cop. Good president, bad president. And now he's going to come into office if he's elected, which most likely he will be selected to, to have a second term for another four years. And it's going to be a shit show, people. And it's all going to be systematically done. And don't get it twisted. We're going to have another epidemic pandemic. And it might even happen when he takes office because this is all a very, very advanced manipulation to tear down infrastructure and to bring about the one world order beast, Luciferian, draconian, demonic system on steroids. The one world order the, what is talked about in the scriptures, all throughout scriptures, especially in the book of Revelations. This is what it is. We are living it, people. And all I'm saying to you is use your higher mind, your higher self. Look at things from a spiritual perspective and see them for what they really are. Instead of being emotionally invested in men and women that don't give a shit about you. Especially this man. This man could give a rat's ass about America. 
All he cares about is the praise that he gets from America. Do you know what type of high this man must have had giving that speech yesterday? His peepee must have had must have got hard. He didn't need no Viagra yesterday to, to plug his wife. He was rock hard yesterday from all the praise that he was getting. He feeds off of it, just like any narc does. They need validation and attention. And he got a shitload of it. And he's going to continue to get it all throughout these elections, all throughout his campaign. There's a lot of people that think, you know, that he's helped so many people. It's like, when? Where? Did you forget that he was on, on the Jeffrey Epstein, uh, I forgot what you call that, uh, flight plan or docket multiple times? Jeffrey Epstein and him were tight. They were boys. They was peoples. That's his like right hand man. At one point, probably still is, even though he says he haven't spoken to him in years. But people are still deaf, dumb and blind. They don't understand the they don't understand the hidden hand that's invested in all of this. There's a hidden hand in all of this. And that hidden hand is very much controlling him and is very much the one that's funding his pockets. So just be aware and be prepared, people. That's all I'm saying. Or choose not to. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't give a rat's ass. I ain't never voted for a president, nor will I ever will. And even though, to some degree, I like the things that Ron, the Don DeSantis has done here in Florida, I could give a rat's ass about him too. Because at the end of the day, I'm a spiritual being having a physical experience, people, just like you whether you want to believe it or not. When you look into the mirror, you are seeing a miracle. You are seeing something that is very phenomenal that you can only begin to understand through the works of the Most High that is working through you, period. Nothing else. That's all that truly exists here. Everything else is an illusion. Everything else is based on lies that we're constantly given. That's why it's so important that we get rooted in the truth of the Most High and live that truth so we can experience something meaningful opposed to experiencing a lie like many of us do. So that's all I wanted to say for this episode. It's just to be aware because this good president, bad president bullshit it's got it's going to have a lot of people twisted and it's going to get a lot of especially white people puffing out their chest. Don't engage. Because there's going to be a lot of fighting. There's going to be a lot of turmoil because of this. It's going to be Democrat versus Republican like it has been. And now that he's coming back in, I'm telling you, you're going to see a lot of turmoil. You're going to see a lot of strife. Because that's the purpose that he serves. And that's the purpose that Biden's been serving. Biden is a piece of shit. He is a demon on steroids. Okay. They can't seem to not be able to stop touching children in public. And this man does it in private. Your Lord and Savior. The, the second coming. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> it's, it's insane. But you know what? I can give a shit about what people think about me when I share these thoughts on this platform. Whoever gravitates, great. I don't give a shit to those that want to try to demonize me and belittle me when I'm speaking this truth. I can give a rat's ass. And yeah, when they make comments on Instagram to me, I just put things in perspective. I make my responses respectfully because I am not going to get hostile over this bullshit. I refuse to. I know better now. I'm older. I'm wiser. And shout out to the narc. My ex, that's the narc, because she taught me a lot about how to deal with a narc. And really, the best way to deal with a narc is to leave them the fuck alone. 
Don't have any interaction with them. That's the best way to do it. So I say, when it comes to this man and dealing with him, don't let him get you all riled up. Because he ain't about shit. All he's about is about bringing this country down. It's not about raising it up. And this whole new slogan, let's make America great and glorious again. That's the new slogan now. Let's make America great and glorious again. When those of us that know the true history about this place know that this country has never been great. The only greatness that is here since its inception is us. It's the resource. It's the source that makes this country become what it is. Not because of no founding fathers. There were many of them were Luciferians, if not all of them. It has nothing to do with that. This is a long legacy of lies. And this is a system that is weaving a web to get you entangled into propaganda so that you lose all type of sovereignty and rights to bring about the one world order system. So that's all I have for you, brothers and sisters. I said this is going to be a short show. I have an interview to conduct and a couple of other things I'm going to do. I wish I could talk more about this, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just do another bonus episode to this and we'll do a, the system and the web day weave part two. All right. And please leave your comments in the chat or in whatever, leave a review on Apple or Podchaser or leave a review on networkofawareness.com. If you haven't subscribed, it's a free subscription. I have my Roku channel launching with season five. That's going to be $6.99 a month and uh, it's going to be filled with content. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this show. And um, like I always say, brothers and sisters, when you live in the present, there's always, and I mean there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. So live in the present. Be present. Be aware. Be prepared for what's to come live your life to the fullest and don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is and always will be within you so light up the tunnel and find your way through the darkness this is or the informationless saying peace love and light Rakata to all my brothers and sisters. Shalom. And remember, all things are possible through the grace of the Most High. So let's give our praises to the Most High instead of man. Thank you.
concludes the Network of Awareness podcast. For more information on the Network of Awareness, please subscribe via email to our website, networkofawareness.com, and follow us on Spreaker.com or any other listening apps you use. For any questions about the NOA, email us at aura at networkofawareness.com. Thank you for listening to one of the fastest growing podcast shows on society and culture in America and abroad. When you live in the present, there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings.